Now I'm recording. Okay. You're recording? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for attending this uh, IT Europe webinar on conformity assessment um, and the launch we are planning to do uh, with your support at the uh, European Connectathon uh, in Luxembourg. That's uh, last week of April uh, 2015. Uh, the purpose of this webinar is to introduce you to this new program that IG is um, adding to its portfolio. It's a Connectathon Plus, if you want, um, and to make sure you understand the reason uh, for this new program program, what drove IG to propose it, and um, then in a second part, uh, what does it mean to participate, um, and that's something uh, Raphael Batoge would, uh, will, uh, will present. Uh, we are starting a little bit late, so I will proceed without um, any further ado. The uh, agenda in this first part is to tell you a bit more why IG is introducing conformity assessment, what is the strategy behind this, and how this relates to the Connectathon. We would also briefly tell you who, who is intended to benefit from conformity assessment and introduce at the international level um, the general uh, rollout which is intended in 2015 uh, for the conformity assessment. Uh, this is more than IG Europe, although we're going to be focusing a lot on IG Europe in the second presentation, the one by Raphael. Uh, in my presentation, I'm going to take a more um, uh, international uh, point of view. So, why conformity assessment? We uh, created this program uh, in a sense, uh, because we are a victim of our success. Uh, there is widespread adoption in multiple countries and many projects uh, of IG profile. And the projects that have leveraged the Connectathon results uh, were quite happy, uh, but they basically told us to be more effective, we need something more than the Connectathon. What we noticed, what those projects reported, is that a different product from different vendors that went through Connectathon um, were not quite compliant with the IG profile, had some gaps uh, in what was shipping uh, in the various products. And there was also some discrepancies. Uh, some products uh, seem to have been to Connectathon multiple times, but the commercial release of the capability of the support of the profile uh, was apparently not yet available and that was creating confusion uh, with uh, the use and the effective use of uh, uh, the, the product and the deployment uh, for these uh, projects in their tenders and their acquisition. So we're trying to bring more clarity there we are not uh, trying to uh, stop or, or weaken the Connectathon. Uh, as we will see later in this presentation, the Connectathon has a lot of uh, characteristics uh, that we want to uh, definitely continue to emphasize and to allow you to benefit from. Um, we also notice that, especially in the area of national and regional projects, uh, year projects, uh, an increasing number is establishing then own, their own conformity testing. Um, and they say, hey, you cannot connect to my uh, regional or national infrastructure unless you uh, pass my test and I put you in, in my list of, uh, of conforming products. Uh, this is a good thing, uh, especially because those projects are often using IG profile with extension. Uh, and yes, they have extensions that those need to be tested. We understand this very clearly, so no criticism there at all. But the unintended consequence of this uh, is that some vendors raise some concern, as well as projects, of saying, why are we investing in testing the IG, this IG profile in each one of those projects? The vendors have to duplicate the work 
and the projects have to also duplicate the work. So it's unnecessary waste, expense, time, and effort, um, both on the side of the developers and on the side of the um, uh, project and their implementation strategy. So that's why uh, we wanted to avoid this duplicative testing, this repetitive testing, and basically factor this out and make sure that IHG had something that was sufficiently clear and strong that it would be uh, able to be used by the project uh, in an absolutely trustworthy uh, manner. So that's where we uh, 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 choose to, how come is my screen not moving? Here it is. So that's started the discussion. And then rapidly it became clear that the strength of IG and the strengths of what we should be doing on conformity assessment and where the most of the value add is, is, is around the testing part. Testing with good tools, good test plans, and say, yes, this product has a correct implementation of this profile with this and that actor. Uh, the purpose of providing a label, a certificate, uh, was considered by some useful and others not very useful. Um, so what I choose is to say, we will do the testing, we will provide the test report, but we're not going to try to provide a certificate or a label. We're going to leave that to the countries and the various national, regional, or other uh, uh, projects as they are managed uh, throughout the world. Especially because most of those have some uh, customization that they need beyond the IG profile and attaching the certification to that uh, would be more meaningful in the market sense. So we want to focus on delivering the core of the value, which is a trusted test report. A test report that if you have done the testing with your product on a given profile and actors that you claim to support, you have a test report and you can show this test report to any projects anywhere in the world and they will say yes. We trust what has been done, we know what has been done, and we, you don't need to redo all of those tests. We will do additional tests for what we've added in our projects. That's the main thrust uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the conformity assessment by IG. So we want those to be recognized. We want to uh, allow certain IG national, IG USA has done it, they've introduced a certification layer and they think it's useful in their market and this is perfectly fine and other IG national don't need, don't want that. Many national regional projects don't even issue a certification, simply uh, a label that they say, yep, this product is good for us they don't even take that step. So the certification layer is something that IG wants to uh, stay out of, but basically say, hey, if somebody wants to build it on top, this is the test report is an objective basis on which this can be done. The third point, which is extremely important, is the international equivalency. The idea there is test one, get your test report, succeed worldwide, and the level of trust, irrespective of the testing has been done in a, a Japanese lab or in a uh, Italian lab, um, is going to be equivalent. And to achieve that, uh, what IH International has chosen to do is to have a single process. It will be the same testing process with the same testing rigor and the same rules that are going to be applied uh, with what we are going to do at the connect of them, but what could be done in other parts of the world. And this is documented in what IG calls, and the specialist of conformity assessment call a scheme. The conformity assessment scheme and IG has developed such a scheme. We'll speak about it a little bit more later. We're going to use the same test tooling with the same test plans. And this is going to be provided by IG International to make sure that wherever the testing is being done, whether you do it at the Connectothon, uh, in Luxembourg or somewhere else later, uh, the 
rigor in the testing and the exhaustiveness of the testing is equivalent between uh, those two testing. And we want the test report to be an international resource and the idea is to publish it at the IH International website, but also to give the test report to the vendor and have the test report uh, being a, a commercial resource available by the vendor to either attach to a tender response or to uh, provide to its potential customers. We want to make sure that this is something where the testing can happen in the most effective way uh, and therefore multiple testing laboratories will be allowed. Um, today we know of one but we we'll know and I will speak to that that there are a couple others that are going to appear in the US and in Japan uh, in the next few months. So those would be first accredited by an accreditation body which is not Aichi there we want to get a, an external authority to accredit the test lab and once they are accredited the test lab would be authorized by IG International to perform the testing. So you see a lot of thinking has gone into organizing this. This is serious and this is done per the rigor of uh, many other programs that uh, government and uh, formal tenders would really expect and is uh, really uh, trustworthy. So the test reports is provided by a lab, a trusted neutral organization that is accredited as I said and that is regularly audited by an accrediting body. Uh, we want to also add a message that corrects one of the perception that not all product tested at Connectathon, and it is a correct one, are, do, do not become commercial product. When you have a test report, this is a commercial product and this commercial product is available. So there is in a sense a commitment from the vendor um, that this is a shipping available product that can be uh, acquired. We want this test report to be specific to a version of the product. Uh, if the product evolves and this evolution impacts the interoperability of the product, then retesting would be required for future versions. If the product evolves but nothing changes in the interoperability, then we will see that there is a process that allows you to bypass the retesting when it can be proven that there are no uh, no, no changes there. The rigor uh, is based not on IHE's opinion but on this, an ISO standard called 17025 which is used for um, uh, uh, widely worldwide and the IHE conformity assessment scheme is developed on that standard uh, and that standard covered the processes, how the plans are being developed and how the tools um, are being used in executing uh, the testing and that's a basis for worldwide equivalence. Uh, there is no better reference. It's the ISO 9001 of the quality world. This is the quality standard in, uh, in uh, conformity assessment 17025. So that is a testing rigor which is in a sense a level above the connector thumb and one of the things that we are requiring uh, is that the vendor who comes with the product, the conformity assessment, has already passed successfully Connectothon. And we do this uh, a little bit to simplify everybody's life because we believe that having reached Connectothon maturity is a major step forward and taking this extra step of conformity assessment should be something which is manageable rather quickly, rather effectively, spending as little resource as possible both on your side and on the side of the lab, thus reducing uh, the effort and the money uh, that everybody uh, is going to have to uh, invest in doing this. So the Connectathon, in a sense, is an entry point um, which is there for efficiency of the conformity assessment and avoid uh, disappointment or drag on processes um, where immature implementation are being brought. So let me step back and show you a little bit of the mechanics under the hood. Uh, we spoke of this red triangle on top. 
the conformity assessment scheme and IG International is the order of that scheme. And if you see something in that scheme that you believe is not correct in terms of process, in terms of equality, in terms of rigor, IG International is the holder of that scheme and will receive this comment and as an established committee now to manage and update and release that scheme. The test tools and the test plans that are built on top of the test tools and the test plan that the connector thumb, but brought to a higher level of rigor, are also provided by IH International, and they go down to a number of conformity assessment testing laboratories. I'm showing only one on the picture here, uh, but they can be, and they will be, multiple of those. IH International has also an oversight activity uh, to make sure that the various lab are accredited, authorized, uh, use the tool correctly, and if you have any concern with this, there is an appeal that IH International offers to the vendors or to the users um, in order to, uh, uh, you know, ask for the program to be uh, further improved or a specific situation to be handled. If I move down now outside of the IH International box, you see the conformity assessment testing by an accredited laboratory. Accredited means there is a neutral accreditation body that reviews if the operation of the lab is conform to the scheme and to ISO 17025. This is very similar to an ISO 9001 quality audit, but it's a quality audit which is specific to uh, testing. And those accreditation bodies exist around the world just like you have uh, accredited quality bodies, um, and we're going to rely on those. This is not an IT invention. We are leveraging an existing infrastructure which is used for conformity assessment of many, many other things than EF interoperability. The conformity assessment lab is next to and under the responsibility of an IT regional and national. Here we're going to be speaking of Kerival as a lab, which is under uh, the responsibility of IG Europe. So that's the case here. But we will have labs, for example, under the responsibility of IG USA or under the responsibility of IG Japan or whatever. The vendor would simply apply to the lab and once the test is conducted and completed, would receive a test report and this test report would be also sent to IG International and would be officially published and made available uh, publicly by IH International. This is a high-level test report. We're not going to tell about the details of your product and have uh, images of screen and all of that. It basically says this is a list of the tests that were passed and they were successful. If there are some comments because there were some special things that had to be done because of the specific of the product. That's what the test report is going to include. It's a five, six page document, not a uh, extensive complex uh, technical document. So consistency, all of the lab operate under the same IG International umbrella. The test labs are local, they can serve a region, a country, uh, multiple countries, and the same trust and rigor is built into the process. We need to really answer the question of are we doing something different or similar to the connector thumb? This table simply shows a number of characteristics, or we call them dimensions here, and tell what the connectathon does. The connectathon is serving vendors and open source uh, designers. Um, the connectathon is a place where the specific product name is in version may be given, but it's not mandatory and nobody checks it. However, when you do your self-attestation through an integration statement, at that point, you declare this version support this profile. But that's the self-attestation. So what we do with the profile conformity assessment, we make this attestation in a sense a third party when performed by an accredited lab and published uh, by IG. You see a little bit of differences in the sense that we will focus on the conformity assessment on final text profiles. 
It is unlike the Connectothon, not intended to be a collaborative learning teamwork. The conformity assessment is go do, run the test, make sure they are passed, and be done. Uh, therefore, we want to keep the Connectothon for this collaborative and learning and also be testing trial implementation profile because before they become final text. Some prerequisite, uh, very little in the Connectothon, a little bit more in the conformity assessment, but here is a big difference. Commitment to commercial product, that's something which is required in the, in the conformity assessment. Guarantee of interoperability, unfortunately we cannot give a guarantee, but we can promise that things are going to be better with conformity assessment because we've applied more rigor. The staffing, it is no longer volunteer monitors who oversee you, but it is staff from a lab, which is under responsibility and under a quality system that require them to behave and to track things uh, in a proper way, professionally. And the result is simply a past result in one case, in the other case, a test report from an accredited laboratory. So you get a sense why we simply say, this is a step after the Connectothon. This is an added uh, rigor. Come to Connectothon, and if you feel comfortable, you want to reach that higher level of rigor in your product, that's why conformity assessment has been designed. And this is one of my uh, last slide. In the conformity assessment, we will use the IT Gazelle test platform. So the tooling is not going to be coming from out of the blue. It's not something we built completely new. We improve the tooling which is used from Connectathon for conformity assessment. And that same tooling, by the way, is also used uh, for the project. And like in EPSOS, we did a project-specific testing that went beyond an individual profile but took a whole business use case through a combination of profile. That's the orange box and Gazelle is also being uh, geared up to support uh, testing inside projects. So you see, we have a vision here, which is to uh, tool and offer those various levels where new value, new rigor is being added as we move up toward the goal, which is we want product and projects, want real products to be useful uh, in their projects, and we want those to be uh, deployed. So uh, who is the target? Essentially, the projects, either large projects or more smaller projects, like hospital-type projects. We have put an emphasis in the first uh, year for 2015 on one, a little bit less on two. And of course, vendors um, who want to uh, avoid this retesting and uh, push this uh, next step in interoperability uh, testing rigor. So how will this be rolled out? It will be rolled out, uh, it has been uh, planned for a couple years now by IG International. It culminated in May 2014 by adopting the conformity assessment scheme, part one or volume one. Uh, it is the master process, if you want, the, the rules of the road for conformity assessment in IG. So on that basis, uh, we selected uh, toward the end of the year uh, the first six profiles that will be offered for testing. We wanted to keep that number low. You may say, what about this one or about that one? Yes, but we wanted for the first year to do it on profiles that have wide acceptance and that are well understood and quite stable. Um, that's because we wanted to reduce the risk and give the maximum value uh, from a market standpoint uh, to the vendors. The volume two that is refining uh, the requirements on the test tools um, is being finalized as the tools are being also developed and finalized. The launch of this, the worldwide launch, is going to happen in Europe. So we are speaking of uh, making uh, the European Connectothon uh, a place where next to the Connectothon in the same location, but completely distinct with distinct processes and distinct staffing, uh, the conformity assessment is being offered in 2015 in end of April. IG USA and IG Japan are equally committed 
uh, they've not yet announced their date. Uh, they are supporting the tool development in the process as well as other countries. I don't want to name them, but uh, many other IT countries are supporting uh, this program. And we expect that in 2016 we will have more labs uh, and more regions and more profiles. And actually, your input will be sought, uh, you know, during this process, uh, especially, you know, at the Connect of Town. If you have ideas and suggestions for a new profile, make sure you share those with us so that we put those in the baskets for the 2016 release of the program. Thank you very much. I want to finish here and pass the ball to uh, Raphael. Thank you, Charles. Uh, this is Eric uh, Pozo speaking. Uh, I'm leaving uh, now uh, Raphael to uh, present you the um, uh, how to apply for that testing and, and the detail, the technical detail. Uh, Raphael is the quality manager of the Carival uh, lab here in Rennes. Thanks, Eric, and thanks, uh, Charles, for your explanation on the strategy, on the goals. Uh, of the conformity assessment. Um, the goal of the presentation that uh, is following uh, is to present you the framework to apply for, for this specific test session. Uh, the application for the testing session has been documented. Uh, the main part will be presented here and you can also ask me for more details or to, to get also the related documents just after the, the webinar. So uh, as quality manager in Kereval, I work with uh, Eric, with his team uh, for several years. And uh, indeed, the objective is to um, industrialize the testing activities and to be conformed to the, to the requirements of the ISO standard, the 7025, in order to ensure some trust, some also some rigor and uh, some reproducibility of our test session. To describe the framework related to the application for the testing session, uh, the following points will be discussed. First, in terms of organization, uh, then also the, um, the detailed list of the tested profiles proposed in this first testing session, this first conformity assessment testing session. We documented also some rules, some commitments that you have to be aware uh, in order to, to ensure the proper organization of the testing session. Uh, a part presenting the related fees for the first uh, session. And of course, we will, you will be able to to ask or your question or give your remarks about what is presented today. The the reference used to organize such a, a conformity assessment test session follow what has been presented by Charles uh, at and what is available at an international level, um, the IHC Conformity Assessment Scheme, which is uh, documented in two parts, a general part, uh, uh, the CAS 1, and in a detailed part, the CAS 2, as Charles uh, told us. And uh, this, this reference is really used in our team as a guideline to propose relevant testing activities. The second guideline, so is the ISO standard 7025, uh, which is really relevant to uh, also organize, set up, prepare, and um, run 
uh, testing session and, uh, and a, uh, a high level of control of documentation also and um, also the, um, the skills of the testing team is regularly uh, assessed in order to be sure that the, um, the testing team is also um, aware of the, um, of the, the attention point that can be uh, found in, um, in some, some profiles, for instance. So the, um, the 70 or 25 um, uh, is for our team uh, reference, we are assessed every year by the COFRAC, which is the accreditation body that Charles also mentioned. And uh, um, we, we are now uh, with um, uh, serious and regular practices in terms of testing. So, both references are, um, are really important to, for the success of such uh, a conformity assessment test session. And we, we are proud for Careval, we are proud uh, to, to have the, um, the trust from IHE Europe to run such test sessions. In a more practical way, um, the organization uh, for this first conformity assessment test session uh, is presented as follows. So we have identified uh, three days during the connectathon in Luxembourg to run specific, so specific conformity assessment testing. Um, so from the Wednesday to, the, to Friday, we, the, the conformity assessment test session will be uh, open. We proposed also some time frame to, to, to run the test. And for you, if you want to apply for this session, you will be uh, required to register for two half days, first system and the test that you want to assess. Uh, uh, among the, this period. So the document that uh, will be um, filled by the company that wants to participate to this session uh, will propose the, the following time slots and you, you can choose, you can propose uh, the, the two half days uh, among the, the proposed dates. Um, Regarding now the, the profiles and actors that uh, are currently proposed for formal conformity assessments, uh, Charles said indeed that it's a, it's a first set, set of profiles that are stable enough today and uh, we hope that we, we will be able to enlarge this, uh, this list. But today, so XDSB is proposed with uh, the four actors related to this profile, document registry, document repository, document source, and document consumer. We propose also the profile 6v3 for cross-reference manager and consumer. PDQ and PDQ v3 as supplier or consumer, and also the ATNA profile related to secured application actor. We list also consistent time, but it's quite a, a prerequisite for, for the rest of the, of the proposed profile. So as participants, you will be requested also to, to select uh, among that list the profile that you, you, you want to, your system and the test to be assessed and choose the profile and actors for your, for your system. Regarding now the, the system and the test that 
that you you would like to propose for conformity assessments. Uh, we identified also some requirements, some rules. First, uh, regarding the um, identity of the system under test, and secondly, also regarding the um, the quality, uh, uh, the system under test also is required to be mature enough uh, to apply for such conformity assessment. So that's the reason why we identified two cases. First, either you, you, your system under test is ready, is a marketed release project, and can be assessed as is. Uh, for regarding the conformity to selected profiles, we we think we thought about a second case. Uh, the case two um, is is possibly for um, for some projects not to be marketed released, but planned to be to be as it in a period of six months. Uh, we uh, we. Um, we will link the the um, conformity assessment test session to your to your product. Some details are given just after. In both cases, uh, the version, the identity, the integrity of the system under test is during the conformity testing session is not allowed to change. Uh, you you will be also requested to to show to prove the identity of the system under test, and uh, we as testing lab we will be able to record the the identity of the system that is that is tested. Concerning now the the quality. Uh, so we we um, propose we, we we would like to to have system mature enough, and so um, the system under test shall have passed the IHC connected and test for the profile and actors targeted for conformity assessments, uh, either during during any connected in the previous two years. Uh, the Luxembourg one is also allowed. Uh, to to be uh, to be taken into account for the two two sessions. So that was the the rules concerning the system and the test, and uh, some maybe some clarification, some explanation uh, regarding the report, and uh, especially uh, with the two cases. Uh, just identified the report. So uh, uh, Charles uh, told us that the um, the, the report uh, provided by the testing laboratory will be uh, published uh, on the IHC International website, uh, and will provide such uh, visibility for your product. Uh, we will be also um, we will also receive the report. Uh, the testing lab is in charge to send you to an identified single point of contact with uh, with an email address. The report in a PDF format, and indeed this report will be your own, and uh, we can we you could use this uh, report for for your product. So regarding the two cases in identified, case one is quite easy. Your, your for a marketing release project, uh, the test report will be provided as soon as all the elements of the test session are completed. Uh, that means that indeed, if the test session run uh, as as good as planned. Uh, and your system is conformed to to the profile to, and actors. Uh, you could have the the report associated to the to the test session. It's quite more complex in the case too, 
but we propose the the following um, the following way of functioning. So for a product plan to be commercially released in the six months following the start of the conformity assessment test session, uh, regarding the fact that uh, you we we as a test lab are not sure of the final version of your product, uh, we will provide the test report uh, only when the, the company attests in a, in a written way, for instance, to the test lab that the system has not been modified and has been released for commercial av availability. So the second case, uh, is proposed to permit also to system under test that are not m uh, marketed released projects to uh, to be assessed uh, during this first conformity assessment testing session. This is the 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 first point. Uh, but also to to add some some specific um, uh, statements on the conformity assessment report. Um, the report is valid for two years and uh, is associated to a single and unique uh, version of the product. So the question also can be can be raised regarding a updated project that has been already assessed. Um, we, we all have to be aware that the conformity assessment report will not cover an updated project for new release version of, of the project or for version commercially released uh, after the period of the six months. So that was also uh, an attention point rela in relation with the, the case two uh, mentioned before. In that case, uh, the, the company may request uh, maybe an extension of the scope of the report in order to cover the, the new and final version of their project. Uh, we uh, we could we could work with the company in order to assess the um, the impact of of potential modification, and um, uh, after analyzing the the this potential impact and information that you uh, could provide to the testing lab, we will take the the, the decision. Uh, there is a need to rerun the test or not. Such points are, um, are really important to, to also understand the, the value of our uh, conformity assessment report. To, to Continue also on on the framework for this test session. Uh, we would add some specific attention points for the people that um, that will be involved in uh, in um, operating the system that are under test. Uh, I mean that uh, during the conformity assessment test session, some several actors are involved. The actor belonging, belonging to, to the testing lab, such as the testing staff and the, the test session uh, manager, but also uh, uh, during the connectathon, the SUT, system under test operators. So we, we would like to, to, to point out the, some attention points regarding the um, their maturity concerning their uh, their experience, um, the level of skills are proposed uh, in order to be um, um, also um, 
in order to to manipulate their system because they know it and they have practiced uh, at least one year the system under test uh, in order also to be um, to be uh, aware of what is required uh, the SUT operators uh, should have also experience at least one year in IHE profiles um, there, there should be also aware and trained to such test sessions. Uh, exam, for instance, the, the connected and participation is uh, really uh, a good training for for that. Uh, but so that was for the the level of skill that could be requested. Uh, but also for 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 you as company, uh, if you if you want to propose some people for that role, um, some rules uh, should, must be respected, such as the unique login. Uh, the SUT, the SUT operators use their unique login that permits personal identification. Uh, it's in order also to trust to to track our test and they shall not share their login. Uh, during the conformity test session, SUT operators will be also required to prepare their SUT, such as identification, to, to show, for instance, the identity of the system under test, configuration, configuration and so on. But, and, and of course, to execute the test steps required by the test procedure and to follow the direction of the test session manager. So this role is also really important uh, in the success of uh, such uh, a conformity assessment test session. So I presented the, the rules uh, and uh, now uh, maybe um, uh, just a point to to be sure uh, to to be mature enough to be ready enough for companies that that would present their SUT. Uh, we propose also a preparation phase for for um, for the SUT, and the conformity assessment test tools will be made available uh, during two weeks just before the connectathon. So it's um, it's, uh, it's an opportunity and we request also the company that uh, will participate to the conformity assessment test session to prepare the, the, this session by accessing the test tools, executing uh, at least once each one of the test scripts for the selected profiles and uh, actors and of course also raise some issue if necessary uh, regarding the use of the of the test tools. So this preparation phase just before the connectathon is also really important to ensure the the success of the of the test session. And finally, the um, the the last but not least point uh, the the fees that are proposed for this first uh, conformity assessment test session um, uh, is quite specific for 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 an introduction of uh, this offer. The fees will be charged only if the system pass the test for the selected profile and actor. So. Um, we hope that the system will pass the the, the test uh, in order to prove the maturity also and the conformity to to the profiles. But it's quite a, um, a specific offer for this first test session. The fees will be for one system uh, and for up to four profile and actors, uh, three thousand euros. Uh, without uh, taking into account consistent time, and uh, it's also expressed uh, um, for additional profile actor pairs for the same system 
that it will be requested uh, 1,000 euro for, for each additional pair. Uh, regarding also the fees, uh, the attention point is also written here to 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 also uh, request the the um, the company uh, to pay the fees before uh, receiving the the test report. Um, I, I hope that the presentation is clear enough to, to present the, um, maybe the operational uh, aspect of this first uh, conformity assessment test session and I, uh, I, uh, I'm, re I'm available to, to answer or to continue with you. If, if you have questions, since you are all muted, you need to ask your questions using the GoToMeeting uh, viewing. So first question from Mark, uh, will we get the scenarios to test beforehand? Uh, so that's what uh, Raphael mentioned, you will get them in the period from April 1st, uh, April 14th. So the two weeks before the uh, Connected Week in Luxembourg, uh, the, there should not be any surprise that the test will be based on the existing test. They will be reviewed to make sure that there is no ambiguity in the outcome of each test. So each test should give an answer, pass or fail. So we will review them and we'll make sure that the documentation is correct and, 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 and meets the requirement. Uh, next question is uh, timing for registration. Uh, can someone help me? <laughs> what, what is the timing for the registration? Yeah, uh, uh, Eric, I, I would say at this point the deadline has not been set, but I would say I would expect the deadline to be you know, we, we know we have only 10 available uh, seats, so we cannot take more than 10 products. Uh, so the deadline doesn't seem to be important. We'll take the first 10 who apply. But I would say applying, you know, after the end of uh, February is probably not a good, uh, not a good solution either for IHE nor for the vendors. So, you know, I would expect that by the end of February, the, the, the applicants will be closed. Thank you. Uh, I've got a question from Michael. Connectathon usually concentrates on interoperability testing, while the add-on is called conformity, well, not conformance testing. Is the testing focused the same as for Connectathon? Uh, my answer will be uh, during the conformity assessment testing, we don't test against a partner, but we are testing against tool. So uh, we will check the conformance of the conformity of the messages against the specification, and we will check the uh, correct behavior of the system on the test using simulation, using simulators. So I hope it answers your question. Which uh, is an, another, uh, Eric, an, another difference why the Connectathon is bringing some value that conformity assessment may not cover from an interability and a collaborative work. Uh, the Connectathon is the place where to do that. Here you go through rigor and we test one system thoroughly. Uh, registration via Gazelle. Uh, we will have uh, a dedicated testing session within Gazelle, but, uh, which will be open, and the registration form will be uh, not made through Gazelle. There will be a dedicated form formula that you will have to fill out. Uh, that was a question from Giovanni. Uh, 
Then a question from Mark. Uh, how much time do you expect an SUT to spend per actor profile per? Uh, No, I, I think I don't have a, a good estimate. I, I think for one system with uh, uh, the, the four uh, actor profile, I think the two as days, so the six hours, uh, will be enough to test that. Uh, it, it's a guess. We're, we are learning as you are you are going to learn with us at this at this phase. It's the first time, so uh, that's that's our guess. Um, okay, next question. So I hope Mark it answered your question. Uh, the next question is from Tony, who is the professional staff and the difference between the professional staff and uh, the volunteer monitors? You want to answer? The the staff for this first testing session uh, is the the testing team of uh, IHG services. The because they are currently uh, qualified and trained for that. Uh, this is the, the organization for this first test session. Next question from Mark. Uh, if we fail some profile but pass other, is that OK like at Connect Uh My gut feeling is that if you register for XDS and PICS, and you fail picks, you will get a report that say you pass XDS. And we'll Correct. ignore the section yep. of yep. picks. But if you register for XDS and fail Atna, you will fail, which is the usual uh, connector and step as well. Yeah, because uh, is required by XDS. Yeah. That's the reason. Uh, next question from Frank. If the product is not allowed to change after assessment, how to handle bug fixes and patches? You want to answer that, Charles? So, yeah, but, but bug fixing uh, is Definitely something that can be done. You do the retesting, and you uh, it means that you have failed conformity assessment if you had bugs. So if you fix the bug, then you would have to uh, do a recovery session. And th this is not planned uh, for this first round, uh, but if we have two or three vendors that have you know, found some bugs in their product and they need to fix them, uh, then it's making a change to the product, so it means that there will have to be a special management of the situation to have Carival decide how much of the retesting has to be done. I assume that if the bug is located to a specific transaction, we may not have to retest another profile, but we'll retest the profile with that transaction, something like that. But all of those have to be handled uh, in a dialogue between the vendor and the test lab. Frank, are you satisfied with the answer? Okay. Uh, I'm running out of question. So, so your last chance to get the questions uh, asked. Um, the webinar was recorded and will be made available. We will also make the, um, uh, the presentations available for you to view offline if you, if you want. I've got another question from Frank. The audit repository actor is part of the ADNA profile. Uh, just to confirm, this is not tested. So uh, secure node and secure uh, application will be offered for testing the audit record we call repository part of the ATNA, the actor ARR from the ATNA profile will not, will not be offered for testing. 
Okay, so not all actors from the selected profile will be tested. We had to reduce the scope uh, in order to, you know, do this on time with quality. And I realize uh, that we please complain about those things so that we can put those in the plan for 2016. I want to raise one point. Um, there are 10, 10 product slots uh, to handle. We don't have the staff to do more for Connectathon. We could do more afterwards, but in the, in the April, uh, I would say, first batch, um, you need to know that IG Europe is going to communicate with you uh, being the first to pass, so this gives an advantage uh, to those. You see that the price and the risk has been reduced. If you fail, you don't uh, have to pay. So we uh, do this in order to encourage you to move uh, forward. Um, and the last point is, um, please, for those who want to apply, uh, communicate as quickly as you can to Raphael. You have Raphael's uh, email uh, displayed right now. On the on the screen, uh, you know, reserve a slot. She will send you the application, and we can get the process moving. Um, the sooner we get clarity, the sooner we can organize things for the better uh, satisfaction of all parties. Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, feel free to ask further question. Uh, Raphael is your contact point. Bye and good afternoon. Goodbye. Thank you very much.